I'm excited about this presidential year. Anybody else excited about it? Right. So be, yeah, right? It's insane, isn't it? You gotta enjoy it for what it is. It's like WWE right now, okay? None of it matters right now. It's whatever happens in November. That's what matters. It's crazy. Like, I halfway expect Trump to come out one day just being like, What's up, everybody, huh? Waving an American flag. Who's ready for some mild racism? Like, that's what I want to happen. What's up, guys? I'm Nick Garrett. And what you're about to watch is uh, a compilation of shows where I performed a chunk of political material during my set. There's a few subjects they say not to talk about on stage if you don't want to split the room. Politics, race, religion, and sports. It always divides the room, so it's recommended not to do these jokes if you want to get consistent work at clubs. Everybody be like, you just talked about politics the whole time. No, I talked about fucking earlier. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's how you talk about politics. You talk about sex first, loop everybody up, we like him, and then Trump! And then, ah! <laughs> I avoided a lot of these jokes just because I never felt like I was in a place in my comedy or in my intelligence to actually speak profoundly about any of these subjects. But somewhere along the line, I got this itch. And it was more of an artistic itch. It was more of this creative need to put out my thoughts on what is happening in America. There's so many kinds of comedians. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a political comic, right? I'm not that smart. So I set out to perform these jokes, apparently, at the beginning of January 2016. Then things got very tense in America, and it got harder to perform these jokes week after week after week. Anything about how you voted? Dude, we elected two live crew into the, into the White House. Sometimes, even on the same night, on the same stage, different audience, jokes just wouldn't work, as you'll see in the video. Uh, ask anybody, just go, like, just stop going to places that say Express, that's it. If you want a good Chinese restaurant, there's a fucking number on it. <laughs> it's usually seven. What's a good Chinese restaurant? Anybody know one here, so she knows? Uh, Fuking, there you go, go to Fuking. That's Vietnamese, but thank you, man. You can convince them to make something Chinese, they'll do it, alright, whatever. My intent wasn't to upset these crowds. I never wanted to. I just wanted to perform my art. I just wanted to say my opinion for that moment, and these crowds just happened to be the ones that came to those shows. Do you know He's how like, many people die for this fucking country? Don't even do that. Uh -oh. yeah, well, I upset one person. <laughs> it wasn't about me. He was, he was just drunk and upset. Here's the thing. Uh, that's exactly why America's great. Because there are people that stood up for us silently. Soldiers that go to countries that they've never been to before. And they fight for us. Alright? That's why America is great. That's exactly it. I, I went overseas to go perform for the troops. I didn't go to Iraq. I'd get a rock to the head. I didn't go there. Right? And with that, I hope you enjoy the set for what it is. And thank you if you get through the entire thing. And if you don't, it's okay. I'm not going to tell those jokes anymore. <laughs> thank you, guys. Now, if uh, anybody was offended by those first few jokes, uh, it's all locker room talk, all right? So... <laughs> uh, it's just all locker room talk, all right? So... <laughs> Locker room talk, all right? So, oh. <laughs> it's all locker room talk, all right, guys? So. Thank you, President. <laughs> Too much? Really? Alright. How did he get away with saying, you know, like, grab that pussy, grab, grab that pussy, ban the Muslim? I wanted that to be a rap song. I don't know why 
why T.I. didn't be like, grab that pussy, grab, grab, you know what I'm saying? Just, it would have been a hit back in the 80s. That was just all locker room talk, so it's okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> I like that movie. Hey, you, you tricked me into politics. <laughs> I don't really think about locker room talk. Look at me, I'm not an athlete. I know Starbucks talk, I know that. Like, Starbucks line, just like, oh my god, why don't they open up another register? <laughs> Well, you think I was gonna talk about Trump? Come on, guys! You gave a message in a microphone! <laughs> Buzzwords, that's what it's all about, man. You gotta be careful, right? That's why it's hard to talk about Trump. <laughs> you know what's funny? You guys all think you know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> You're like, look at that little long-haired, hippie-looking drug guy right there. He's gonna hate on 45. You better not hate on 45. I'll pull out my 45. I'm still an open carry state. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not gonna talk too much about our president, but I am because I'm Mexican and I got a microphone. Uh, <laughs> Whatever you voted for, who's you voted for? That's your American right, the end, all right? We got Trump as president, fine to deal with, okay? We're America, America's always gonna be good, right? I didn't fall for it. I didn't like his slogan, make America great again. In my head, I was like, what are you talking about? America's already great. Did we forget? Right, America's great. It's a great country. We all have shoes on our feet, we all have food in our belly, we all got phones in our pockets, we're doing good, man. Make America Great Again is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever heard. Anyone else with me on that? America's already great. America's wonderful. We got vape pens and hover boards. That's insane, okay? America's already great, okay? It's already great. America's a great country. You can walk around with a man bun and not be a samurai. That's how great it is. Okay? And I check them. Every single guy with a man button, I'm like, what up? I check them. And I check them. Every guy with a man button, I'm like, what up? I check them. <laughs> check them. And they all drop their latte. Ah, they all drop it. <laughs> like, if this person said the man button, son, they don't even throw up a block. I learned that one Seagal movie, Block and Kick. They don't even do that. She obviously has a lot of man butt friends or something. <laughs> the only problem I had with Trump was in the beat, like the biggest problem was make America great again. That's bullshit right there. America's already great. What are you talking about? Right? And that's what we forgot. It's okay to slightly clap. You see, back four years ago, people would be like, fuck yeah, America's great. And now we're worried about it. Why? America's great. Think of how beautiful it is, all right? Yeah, man. Right? Wonderful. Beef jerky, black dudes watching anime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's insane. Japanese people fucking break dancing. It's <laughs> how great America is. America's great. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Remember that. It's great, right? No? Don't be with me? Alright, fuck it. <laughs> America's shit, guys. <laughs> I didn't do it, all right? I don't know what the fuck happened. I like how you guys are all on your weird edge. You don't know where I'm going. You're a little afraid. You're stuck to some weird beliefs that you have. But lo loosen up, okay? It's Saturday. I'm not saying anything crazy. Voting for Trump is like choosing Zangief on Street Fighter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It looks like a good move at first, but by the third fight, you're like, ah, oh, shit, he just got one shitty move. Damn it. That's how you know who the nerds are. Look at all the, everybody else. Like, what? <laughs> everybody thought Trump was racist. He wasn't racist, he was a salesman. That's all it was, right? He just, he was a Mad Lib racist. He just threw out phrases and let you fill in the blank. That's all he ever did. For his whole audience, he's like, we need to get rid of these immigrants. And someone's like, Mexicans, okay, those. And he just went with it. <laughs> and someone had said Japanese who had dressed up as Godzilla, like, ah! It didn't matter to him. 
And he has a reason for everything he said. That's the crazy part about him, right? Every counterpoint, they'll be like, sir, you said that you that we should get rid of Mexicans. That's what you said, Mr. Trump. And he's like, yes, I did say that. I did say that Mexicans need to leave the country. I got a lot of Mexican friends that are in dire need of a vacation. They work really hard. They should take some time off. Hillary lost me when she tries to relate to everybody, right? That's all Hillary does. I'm gonna try, I, look, I'm Mexican. I don't need any more relatives, okay? <laughs> and it's crazy right now because all the candidates, they're a mess, man, right? They're a mess, they don't know who to relate to. That's a problem. They're on NPR, they're doing Time Magazine, People Magazine, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, they're on Snapchat. I saw a few of them on Tinder. They're on Tinder, all right? <laughs> yeah, it was like, you wanna feel a different type of burden? Swipe right on Bernie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna vote for Bernie, all right? That's what I'm gonna vote for. Even if he doesn't make it, I'm gonna vote for him, right? Nobody here's with me, good. But here's a reason why. I'm gonna vote for Bernie just because I want somebody that when he gets in office and leaves office, looks exactly the same. That's what I want. Yeah, he's just old. He was born in 1941. He's, he was born before they called it World War II, okay? He was born when it was still the big distress overseas. They didn't have a name for it yet. Bernie's old, man, right? And the best part about being that old is that, like, he'll never be a corrupt politician. He can't take bribes. You gotta whisper to give somebody bribes. <laughs> yeah, man. He's 74. He's just gonna sit there like, huh? What? Apple prices went up in Rouse. He'll just go off into a story like an old man does. I'm trying to see where to go with you guys. That's what I'm trying to do. Because I know how unfamous I am. <laughs> I'm like, this is bullshit. We need somebody to talk about politics. <laughs> Whoa, buddy. Calm down with that. What are you, a Mexican that lost his kid? I can say that. I'm Mexican. Remember earlier, guys? How you lying? That is the Mexican whistle. You get all oh, play -Doh. I know you don't have many around here. It's okay. Farmer's Branch is doing a good job of keeping them out. <laughs> there you go. We got some more Farmer's Branch. All right. Hopefully I didn't piss anybody off when you're like, WALL! <laughs> Build a wall! Build a wall! That's always people that never come to border towns. Like, you've never even been here. Why do you want to, I get why we want to build a wall, right? To get some of our parking spaces back. I get it. <laughs> Like, border towns are the only places you see Mexicans go like, the Mexicano, like, yeah, it's the only place. <laughs> they want to get rid of Mexicans. But salsa is the number one condiment, does that make sense? <laughs> get rid of Mexicans, but let's keep my ear. She watches the kids. <laughs> see, that's why Mexican nannies are the ones that are saving us. You realize that, right? You gotta give it up for any Mexican nanny. Yeah! Cause they're taking care of these white kids and teaching them Spanish. Yeah, and, the, and now the parents have to keep the Mexican nanny around. Because, like, we can't fucking understand what they're saying. I think they're dissing us. <laughs> the dad's like, how you doing, son? Uh, Está bien, pendejo, all right? It's... All right, okay. Maybe they need to watch a little less Dora. I don't know exactly. <laughs> they want to build a wall. There you go. There you go. want to build a wall in between Mexico and the U.S., I say, you know what? Let them build the wall. Let them. Mexicanos are smarter than that. We've seen slingshots. <laughs> That's all you need is two big rubber bands. And Mia, vieja, get in the middle. Get in the middle. Here we go. Poof. <laughs> oh, she lost a chancla. I told her to squeeze her toes. <laughs> Round up all the people. That's the thing. It's funny. People want to. Uh, uh, they want to build a wall across the border. Never been to a border town. You know what I'm saying? You got people voting for a wall that have never been to the south. Twenty-one billion dollars. Really? For a billion dollars, you can hire the illegals to become the wall, and they'll do it. They'll just stand there day and night, making sure nobody comes in. And, oh, I'm gonna be American. And they'll fucking stop everybody and catch them. Oh, I got you, Pentagon. You can't be in America. Grab them all. No, no, I got your shoes, Pentagon. Bye.
driving through a Target parking lot, right? And I hit a speed bump, and it went, I wait! I was like, oh shit! <laughs> You're taking every job, huh? <laughs> you know, oh man, I won't get too much into it though, I don't wanna, I don't wanna alienate anybody. <laughs> right, you don't wanna make the Americans feel aliens, right? <laughs> <I'm alienating. laughs> now here's, here's the joke that has Somebody leave my show yesterday. So let's see how you guys handle it. No way! Pro choice, pro life. Oh, I don't want an answer, because here I'll tell you what I believe. I never thought about certain topics before this election. Like, I never thought about pro choice, pro life, ever. Because in my mind, that's a woman's choice, the end. That's all I thought, right? Yeah! So whatever she wants to do, that's up to her. Whatever a woman wants to do to her body, she wants to do to her body. Not a lot of applause on that, that's okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you right now, it's a woman's choice, the end. That's how I feel. Yeah. It's up to her. Uh, that was a woman's choice, that's what I thought, the end, you know? That's how I felt. You know, whatever a woman wants to do with her body, she wants to do with her body. Because right? in my mind, that's a woman's choice, the end. Whatever she wants to do with her body, that's how it is. Because to me, that's a woman's choice. The end. Whatever. Right? Yeah. You know? It is. Whatever a woman wants to do her body, that's up to her. 
Yeah, man, that's it. Whatever she wants to do, she wants to do. And I know there's some guys in there that are like, no. But here's the thing. If there was a bill that said, once a week, men get kicked in the balls. No. Yeah, you wouldn't want women vote for that. Landslide victory. They're going to be out there. And there's going to be some dudes voting too because they're like, you might get me laid. You know what I'm saying? And they'll wear, they'll wear the little, I voted for ball bus seat uh, bill. And then when we see that, like, it won, ball busting, B, 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 the ultimate blue balls plan. We're all gonna be walking around on Friday like, ah, oh, shit, the government should tell us what to do with our body. This is bullshit. These are my nuts. Every Friday, we're gonna be walking around holding our nuts like, ah, oh, man, the government should tell us what to do with our body. <laughs> Go back to the sex jokes, is that what you're telling me? No, we're digging in, guys. <laughs> You don't want women voting for that. <laughs> It'd be a landslide victory, and on Friday we're all gonna be like, oh no. Oh. I'm pro-life when I see a baby. When I see a baby, it's beautiful, it's precious, that's innocence, that's life, right? I'm pro-life. Yeah. When I see the adult that become, pro-choice. Yeah. That's where the problem is. It's not the babies, it's the adults that are the problem. Can we have a 32-year abortion? Can we have If it takes you 10 minutes to figure out what you want at Chick-fil-A, it's a chicken sandwich done five different ways. We could have X you out. Pro-choice. Get out of here. Let's speed up these lines. Hey, who started their weekend now? Who's already celebrating the 4th of July now? Yeah, man. Yeah, 4th of July, right? Yeah. I love America. America's great, man. America's great, isn't it? It is, it is, it is, okay? Every city gets to be the Myrtle Capital World at least once. America's great. <laughs> Too dark? All right, moving on. <laughs> gun control, that's a big one. You know, gun control, that's always a big issue, right? And here's the thing, I'm from Texas. Guns are away a lot, okay? It's just how it is, all right? Gun control is a big thing. I don't know how Sunnyvale feels about guns. I'm from Texas. Guns are away a lot, right? Is that how it is up here? No. No? Gun control. That's always the thing. You know, they're never going to take our guns. That's America. That's America, okay? Some gun owners are like, they're going to take our guns. That's not going to happen, okay? That's exactly what gun owners have been waiting for their entire life, all right? That's all they've been training for, was for somebody to come take their gun, okay? Have you ever been to a gun range? They have those little uh, target sheets. They have three of them, okay? They got a zombie. They got Osama Bin Laden, because they still have that for some reason. And then they got somebody coming into your house to take your gun. Those are the three things that they're preparing for. Gun control is always an issue. Just like you guys, I'm from Texas, guns are a way of life. Yeah. Yeah, man. Guns, I'm sorry, it's what makes America, America. You know, that's why no country has ever invaded us. Yeah, because it's way they know, they have to get through Jacksonville first. That's too intense. <laughs> Because a few people in here own 87 guns. That's why. Him right there, he fucking hates Bambi. <laughs> gun owners are freaky to me. They, 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 they watch Bambi like, that's right, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> because someone in here owns 87 guns. Yeah! Someone in here is packing. They're ready for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and that's the friend you want. He's like, don't worry. Snipers. Finally, I can use it. My night vision sniper hood. <laughs> let's do this. Put on the hazmat suit. We're taking out some fucking zombies. Tossing it. Yeah, let's all go to Rooster Teeth Feathers. That's a good place to hide and fuck just be hanging out with guns. And you'll be like, I'm glad this happened. You know what I'm saying? Especially here in Texas. You know, you can get a gun in Bucky's if you fill up enough. <laughs> you fill up enough, like, here's a gun and a brisket sandwich. Only one of those. Guns. We got mascots with camouflage hats on them. Bucky is a fucking badger with a camouflage hat. Like, ah, we're gonna get these deer! <laughs> we got a cuddly doll ready to hunt somebody. Oh, man. But I get it, right? He's a beaver. Huh? He's a beaver, thank you. What did I say he was? This one of those. Badger. Beaver, badger. Okay, buddy. One of them builds a dam, and the other one 
badges. But I do, I will say this, I think there does need to be some control, right? It doesn't need to be massive background checks. It can be something simple. Like right before somebody buys a gun, the seller should be like, let me see your phone. Yeah. And if there's a crack across the screen, you can't get a gun. Sorry. What? Right, you either dropped it or you threw it. You don't have the right temperament. That eliminates 67% of Americans right there. Some of you sitting on crack phones right now, like I sat on it, that's how it broke. Suge Knight sat on his gun and shot himself in the ass. That's still unsafe. I think the one thing that Trump needs to do is, with his little executive orders is legalize pot. That's the one thing yeah. that The one thing that I think uh, Trump needs to sign an executive order on is uh, legalizing pot, right? Thank you. Seems like the same two people keep supporting <laughs> Legalize pot. I don't know why I didn't just legalize pot all across the board. Right? Okay, good. Four of you with me. Whoever didn't clap, I'm assuming you're drug dealers. That's the only reason. Legalizing pot. That's what he needs to do. It doesn't hurt anybody. Right? Legalize it. Tax it. Put the money in education. Give it to the kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the money, not the pot. The money. Put that money into education. Let's help out with... If we can't have legalized pot for everybody, there's one group that needs legalized pot immediately, alright? There's one group that should be able to smoke whenever they want, however they want. Teachers, okay? <laughs> Thank you to the teachers in the back. Teachers. Teachers. Yeah, teachers. <laughs> Thank you. Finally. I'm a teacher. Right, what do you teach? Fourth grade. What do you teach? Fourth grade, you need it! Oh my god, fourth grade! You got three of the boys finally getting one pube showing up. Look! There it is! The girls in their training bras like, hey, I'm awkward! Each of my jokes has only a few people with it every time. So you like, no, hey, look, they need to be able to smoke pot. They get paid shit, okay? And we all hate other people's kids. Spark it up, you know, take a day off every now and then. Fever pain, it'll be amazing. We'd all been straight A students if our teachers rolled up a blunt in front of us. We would have listened. Every single person here would have listened if you saw your teacher rolling up. So George Washington. Yeah, right? Why? Because you're American. And we have that little criminal inside of us. We do. We like to listen to somebody with a little darkness in their life. You know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, we like somebody with a little secret. That's why we walk like Johnny Cash and the Blues. That's why we watch Lock of Bra, Scarface, Gangland, Breaking Bad. That's why you gummy bears, you bite the heads off of them first. Yeah, screw you, Teddy Grand Cow. I'm American. The violence in you. We love criminals. We love violence. We love it. That's why we, they had a whole series about the O.J. Simpson case. We all knew what it would happen, but then it played again. I see American and you screw you, Teddy Graham cat. They don't do that in France. They're like, oh, they the for David. Sugar. have a reason for algebra. <laughs> yeah, we would. Your teacher would be rolling up and like, I just got two joints out of his dime bag. <laughs> now, according to, uh, to X, what do I have left? <laughs> That's right, Timmy, enough for a bowl hit. See, talk like that. Finally. <laughs> some of you thought, oh, of course this pothead wants pot legalized up there with his suit. I look like it, right? Yeah, I didn't start until three months ago, guys. <laughs> Joke's on you. <laughs> and I didn't, I waited, man, you know? And here's why I waited. I'm an 80s baby, I'm 34, you know? Like, I was raised, thank you for that, right? I was, I was raised with all those programs that just say no to drugs, you know? I was raised with a, yeah, dare, exactly! I was raised with dare and don't, don't do drugs, just say no, and then Captain Planet, fuck litterers, let's save the planet, right? I was raised with the special episodes of Saved by the Bell. No, Zach, get that joint out of your hand, you know? And they would rap about it. Joints don't make a point. And I believed in every single one of those messages. I visited McGruff the Crime Dog. I was like, you're right. 
I'm taking a bite out of crime. I was raised with sitcoms at a moral at every single show where it's like, you can't do that. That's not the way life is. They don't do that anymore. Everyone's just an asshole on TV now. Nobody fucking learns morals. They're like, no, fuck you. Fuck you too. You know? And I lived that life. I was like, that's right. Good citizen. Not going to smoke pot. Not going to drink. I'm going to be good. You know what I'm what saying? Happened? Yeah. Well, this is what happened. Right? Then I realized something as an adult. All those ideas are pothead ideas. All those creations are pothead creations. Because only a pothead would ever think, let's put a dog in a trench coat and make him a detective. We'll call him the gruff. Take him out of crime. You get it? Oh, the dog. He bites. All right. Only potheads are like, you know who would sell good car insurance? A lizard with an Australian accent. That's a pothead thought. One partner was just looking at his pet lizard like, I only trust you with car insurance, buddy. You know what you're talking about. And his other pothead friend was like, I only go to this duck for life insurance. I don't even smoke it, it hurts my lungs. I take edibles, I like edibles. I like edibles. So we were taking time bond for responsibility. You take an edible, you're like, how, how many chores can I get done before it hits? Like, how many potheads do I actually got here? How many potheads do I got here? Like, how many potheads do I got here? Right here. Okay. Like, how many potheads do we have here? Here, here, okay, all right. So how many potheads do we got here? Okay. Right. Hey, okay, how many potheads do I got here? How many potheads do we got here? your life when you're at a party, sans pot, and you looked across the room and there was somebody you hated who had pot, and what did you do as an adult? You fucked up. You said, all right, we're going to make friends. You went over there to this person that you hate. You asked them what their name was, even though you fucking knew it, you're like, all right. You hate him the whole time, you're like, you got that face that I want to punch, you gotta punch you in the face face. And he manned up. He said, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna like, whatever, I'm gonna figure out this guy. And you stood next to that person you hate on yourself, buddy. How you doing? What is it? It's good stuff, it's really good, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Where'd you get this? Oh, alright, alright. Did you watch John Wick? Yeah, it's a good movie. Right? And then after a few punches, you're like, you got that guy. That's what America needs to do with each other, so we fall in love with each other again. Right? Wyoming needs to go smoke with New York. Sacramento needs to come smoke with Texas. San Diego needs to go smoke with Utah. That's what all of America needs to do. Everybody just needs to smoke pot with each other and just calm down and become friends and be like, yeah, you're a little different, but I like the way you talk. And that's how we fucking handle this. We need to remember that we're all human beings, right? Yeah. yeah. And everybody just needs to remember how much we love each other. That we need to remember that we are the melting pot. We are a great country because we are a melting pot. Right? You know, we learn each other's slang, we learn each other's vernacular. The good thing about what we're at now is that there's an open conversation in America. Only problem is some people want to converse and some people want to conversate. Right? Blew your mind with grammar, didn't I? One of those words is wrong. And, and this election opened up a conversation with America. The only problem is, is that some people want to converse and some people want to conversate. That's the only problem. Yeah, grammar blew your mind, huh? <laughs> One of those words is completely wrong. But you understood both those words, right? Because you're American and you learn how to adapt to learning both sides of every piece of language. You know, when you go to New York, you hear, forget about it. You're not forgetting about nothing. It's just, hello, you move on, right? You go to Texas, howdy, y'all, and every Texan plays along, even though we don't actually say that, right? You go to Kansas, they're like, oh, I don't know why we're here. You know what I'm saying? 
they, they go to Oklahoma and, you know, their favorite saying, we're not Texas, sorry. You know, and that's, <laughs> and that's the beauty of America. You know, I, and one thing I will say uh, that we need to stop doing, uh, we need to stop calling Trump supporters racist. Can we do that, please? Voting for Trump does not make you a racist. I know a lot of people are saying Trump supporters are racist. Stop saying that. That's not true. I know good Trump supporters that didn't know any better. The end. Right? <laughs> Everybody that believes that a Trump supporter is racist, you're wrong. I know great Trump supporters that did have some different idea in their hand of what his plan was, and they're hoping for it, all right? All right? So Trump supporters are not racist. We need to stop that. But the racist ones are really happy. Aren't they? Those are the ones. <laughs> They're so excited. Wash the sheets. They're so excited. <laughs> the racist ones are really happy, though. Those are really, those guys. They're so excited. They're like, go wash the sheets. You know what I'm saying? They're happy. <laughs> but the racist ones are really happy, aren't they? <laughs> They're excited. Oh my God. They're like, wash the sheets. They're excited. <laughs> Sorry for white supremacists just for a second. <laughs> right? Oh, poor white supremacists. I didn't know we couldn't make fun of the Klan. I know, poor white supremacists. They've had it tough, haven't they? <laughs> <laughs> They've just been sitting there being all white and supremacists, just sitting there like, fucking whatever. <laughs> whatever. All right, Beyonce at the halftime. Whatever. <laughs> Female Ghostbusters. Whatever. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner. Whatever. Black Annie, bullshit! <laughs> Black Annie, they just been having a bad time. <laughs> That's the one that threw them overboard, Black Annie. Like, that was our one struggle. We let, we let Jay Z have that one sample and you took the whole fucking play. <laughs> like, we already let Jay Z have that one song. You gonna take the whole fucking play? Is that really an O? Do you even know why that was an O? <laughs> you know, you know what really pissed them off? Black Annie. Black Annie's what pissed them off. Right? That pissed them off, man! Because Annie is pretty much their story, if you think about it. That is, the, that is a, a poor white person's dream right there. A poor racist white person really hopes that his uncle dies and makes him rich. You know what I'm saying? You know, so they kind of feel like, damn it, we already gave a hook to Jay-Z, you can't take the whole play, you know, so they're pissed. All right, moving on. That was a new joke. <laughs> a new joke, I was trying. I was trying to figure out how to relate it. I need to figure it out, man. I'm trying to figure out how to make it like, that's how they feel, you know, they feel like, you know, this curly-haired, red-headed, red-headed ginger, the most unadoptable kid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, as a kid, you see it like, no, no, not at all, you know? Like, She's singing over there to herself. What the fuck? She just, just sings for no reason? They've had a tough time, man. We took away their Confederate flag. We took half of their wardrobe away from them. That was bullshit, guys. <laughs> you guys said I could go there. Forget it, man. They're all riled up. Let's play marches. Yay! They go to the calendar. March time. <laughs> Let them march. That's their right as an American. You know, people go down. Like they had a march eight months ago in Orange County. People went down there, fought the KKK, got stabbed, got yeah, in Orange County of all places, right? Got arrested. That's not how you answer hate. You don't answer hate with violence. All right? You don't. You want to piss them off? Set up some lawn chairs and enjoy the shitty parade. That's it. Just wave. Hey guys, how you doing? Right? That's it. It's their right to march. They'll be out of breath by the third block. They're hoping somebody stops them. All right? Power. This is a big role, man. They don't put it on often. Let them march. It's not again. Then just set up a march right behind them of mariachis. Just a million mariachis. Just playing behind them with, with the flower guy. Who wants flowers? Who wants teddy bears? Who wants flowers? Who wants teddy bears? Oh, they don't have that in Portland? No? Do you have that teddy bear? 
bears, flowers, teddy bears. Are you afraid that they're in here? <laughs> Brought them in. Come on, cousins, get them. They don't know what to do. Is that what you're afraid of? The crab? Like, I don't know. You might have one come out. <laughs> but you know how to deal with them, right? You know, don't make eye contact, don't look at them, they're like velociraptors. One catches you with the eyes, and the other one swoop in from the sides. You know what I'm saying? The clan's never dealt with teddy bears and, and flowers guy. So he's gonna walk up to him, flowers, teddy bear, teddy bear for the pretty lady, I can see your pretty eyes. The flowers will match the red around your hand. Set up a bunch of free taco stands at every clan march. Anybody can have tacos if you're there. Because here's the thing, they're going to have to lift their mask to eat it. <laughs> they're going to have to! Then nobody's that racist that they're going to eat it through an eye hole. It's going to burn them! They're going to be like, no, I will not show you my face. Oh, these tacos are so good. Nobody's doing that. Oh, God. Oh, the picante sauce is burning. That's how much I love being white. Like, <laughs> See them, and you're gonna be like, you got pretty eyes. And we're gonna see their face, and we're gonna enjoy. It. We're gonna be like, that's a human being right there. We need to stop yeah. hiding under these these masks. That's a human being right there. And you learn about each other. You bring out some pot. You smoke. You're like, you're not that bad. You fucking get over it. That's how you fight hate with tacos, free tacos. Then <laughs> we're in a good year, 2016. We're gonna get a new president. I think we're fucking up. We need a Mexican president. That's what we need. Yeah. So, okay, so we have Trump. All right. 2016, make America great again. Fine. 2020, I think we need a Mexican president. Okay? So we got Trump. All right. Make America great again. 2016 to 2020. Fine. That's why I think in 2020, we need a Mexican president. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. Let's give them all four years. Why not? Why not? 2016 to 2020, make America great again. In 2020, I think we need a Mexican president. That's what I think. Thank you. So yeah, we got Trump as president, all right? Make America great again in 2016. It's fine. She's from England, right? You're from Britain or whatever? You got your Brexit to handle. She's waiting for that to happen to, so she could be going back to the group. Travel band's getting crazy, man. I came back with a teddy bear from Build a Bear. They wouldn't let in. He didn't have his passport. I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna be fine, man. That's why I think. Here's the thing. All right. So 2016, make America great again. Trump's our president. Fine. 2020, we need a Mexican president. That's what I'm saying right now. <laughs> Three people with me. Perfect. We're gonna be good, man. We're gonna be good. Make America great again. All right, 2016, that's what we're gonna do. 2020, I think we need a Mexican president, right? Thank you. Some of you are still not into that. I saw your feeling. Like, build a wall around that thought. I get it. Some of you didn't like that idea. You're like, build a wall around that thought. I get it. It's a hard thought to have. And I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with the Trump supporters. I don't want another politician. I want to drain. I wanted to drain the swamp, right? I don't want a proper pol. Hey, I'm Alex Rodriguez. Thank you for voting for me. <laughs> Gracias. I don't want that. I want real Mexican. Five three, mostly torso, brown. Right? Works in the back of auto zone. His name says Turito. Yeah, you can't say his real name. It's Aztec. It has an X in the nation, and I don't know how to say that shit. When he walks, he hits his belly. That's what I want. <laughs> Don't even tell him he's running. Just write him in. Just do it. Ohio 4, Vipers. Just write it in. Don't tell him he's running. He's ran enough, okay? <laughs> and you wake him up like, you're president. Oh my god! He's excited. <laughs> his first speech is gonna be like, Hello, I'm in. <laughs> They haven't fixed the podium yet. Hello, America! I know you didn't expect these. Because trust me, after Trump, nobody's going to that job. You're going to need a Mexican to do it. <laughs> and how beautiful would that be? A country made by immigrants, elected immigrants. Wouldn't that be great? Wonderful! Isn't that
that a beautiful message on the holiday that we're celebrating about Irish immigrants? <laughs> Have the most inspirational speech, you'll be like, look at this country, treasures untold. How many wonders can one country hold? You might look around and say, hey, we got a lot of things, but you want everything. You guys got gadgets and gizmos of plenty. You got who's it's and what's it's galore. Think of a box, how many you have? 20, yeah. But you guys want more. These immigrants just want to be where your people are. <laughs> be up on the beach, just dancing, running around on the uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, feet, yes. <laughs> of where you are, of where you run, spending all day in the sun. They just want to be part of your world, you see? Melania can plagiarize a speech. My Mexican president can. <laughs> oh man, thank you for everybody that figured out there was a little mermaid. And Sweetie then secretly whispered it to all the people that didn't know. So every girl in here was like, it's a little mermaid. I love that movie, it's a little mermaid. And every dude acted like they ain't seen it. Y'all saw it, man. He'd go to North Korea and get every hostage out of there. Every single hostage. He'd just go over there and he'd be like, hey, get over here. Get no, hey, it's okay. They'd be wrong. It's all right. It's sorry. But me and the I'm sorry. 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 Okay, he's not going to do it again. Don't you do it again. That's right. Go ahead. Get on the bed. Don't worry. He won't do it again. Get out of here. You guys are good, alright? Here's some oranges. Thank you, see you later. All right, <laughs> and he'd go to China, and he'd meet friends with all the Chinese people, fix up our debt, he'd be like, Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I know how to make your food. He knows how to make Chinese food. <laughs> For the five people that laughed at that, thank you. The rest of you, who do you think's making that food over here? <laughs> do you think there's real Chinese people in the... No! Chef at a Chinese restaurant, right? It's a Mexican that ducks really quickly. Oh shit! He ducks. <laughs> and he comes back pretending to speak Chinese. Yeah. Make America okay again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you guys need to fall in love with each other again. You know what I'm saying? Be great. Yeah, aww. When you get out of. Here's the thing, you know what happened? Uh, everybody got on social media. That's what happened. That's what messed up the past two years. Everybody got on fucking social media. And, and people that weren't prepared, like I said, once again, I'm an 80s baby. I grew up with the internet, you know? I remember when you had to get a sticker to get approved to go into the internet. At school, they were like, you sure you're approved? Your parents gonna let you do this? <laughs> all right, enjoy the internet. And if you grew up with the internet, you know all the tricks and the scams and the trolls. You knew that since the beginning. You knew what ASL meant. You knew all that shit. You learned the lingo. You knew what was fake and what wasn't. Then all of a sudden, in the past two years, grandma and grandpa got on there, didn't know what the fuck was real or not. Started sharing racist articles and shit. Caused a firestorm. We need to do that. We need to break all these buzzwords and things like that. You know, like we need to stop we need to stop putting images in our head that don't match. Like when I say illegal, when I say thug, when I say racist, when I say terrorist, you guys all have four specific images in your head, right? But nobody thinks illegal Irish, right? Nobody thinks racist black people, they're there. <laughs> no, <laughs> was that too much? <laughs> Everybody's racist to be honest. You know, and whether we like that or not, you know, like we just, because we all know what the California raisins were. That's racism, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Too much? All right, all right. Take it back a notch. Sunnyville wasn't ready for that one. All right. I'm going to keep.
keep digging in because you guys seem, seem to feel a little uncomfortable about this. Okay, we're going all the way then. I was over here, America's great! Fuck it, nah, not anymore. <laughs> Good? Oh no, no man, we'll be fine. Some of us won't make it to the end of the year, but we'll be. <laughs> but that's life! Anyway. It's all good. That's what I believe. I believe we're all good. That's my message of love. Just love each other. You know what I'm saying? Right? Nobody with me. Okay. Because there's nothing to like. Here's the thing you gotta remember about America America's great. That's why the rest of the world wants to be America. Right? I've been to Turkey. They're walking around with Chicago hats and New York caps and Yeezus. You know, they make it there, but they're walking around with it. Oh, would you guys think they were making that in fucking New York? No, they're making it in Pakistan. And those dudes are rocking it first for way cheap. I just put, look at that, I got this from work. You know how you steal shit from work? They do too. You know, you guys just happen to steal staplers and shit. They got Yeezus walking around like, yo, son, what you know about them Jordans? <laughs> That's the beauty of America right there. We're a melting pot. We are the cool cousins of every other country out there. You realize that, right? Every other country has cousins here that are like, oh, my cool cousins, they went over to America. They're doing some shit. We're the cool ones. We're the ones that send out trends. That's why Japan is dressing up like cholos now. That didn't come from Japanese. It came from Islos. You know? That's why you got French guys rapping. Et fe, et fe, et fe. America, America. You know, we've been on the edge. Why? Because we're the, we're the country of 24 hours. We're the country that invented that. Other countries are like, I'm going to take a break at 5 p.m. Have you ever tried to go to a, a restaurant in Italy at 3 p.m.? Nobody's there, right? They're all just like, what are you doing here? Go home. Be with family. Not Americans. I need that money, son. I'm a hustler. Give it to me. You know what I'm saying? How crazy is it that 2015 was our last innocent year? Remember? When 2015, all we were worried about is if Miley Cyrus was gonna come out with a dildo? Like, that was the biggest thing! Her tongue was the most offensive thing on TV! <laughs> That's also the beauty of America, is that we are the melting pot. We have learned each other's cultures. We mix them in, right? Some people don't like it that much, but we do do it. You know, that's the beauty of it. I went to a Korean taco place in Sacramento. It was delicious. Thank you, Korean War, for bringing those people over here. You know? <laughs> Too much? All right. You guys know how that, that's how it works out, right? We go to war, we fuck their people, we bring them back. And then we got a little Korean-Mexican walking around. I'm gonna be tacos! Man, that's what solves every war. We send our best men at 18 when they're all fucking full of sexual drive. And we pick them up with just just built and ripped, and they go over to these countries. And all these other women are like, "Oh my God, what is that? I've never had one of those." And we bang the war out of them. <laughs> Our penises that are solving the wars. My wife's from here. You can, you gotta stop. We need to let that happen and make all these little mixed babies and let them take over the world. <laughs> That's right, right? And mixed babies are beautiful. God, why do they always come out so pretty? They're just like this amazing thing. Like, hello, this is what the future looks like. America 2.0. <laughs> you know what makes it beautiful? We're all here with people that we fucking love. Right? We're all here. We're sitting at a table with some of our best friends, and it's one of the most beautiful memories that you're ever going to have. And you just keep creating those and enjoying them with each other. Because, man, we're Americans. We adapt. That's the beauty of America. You know what I'm saying? Adapting, growing, changing with it as much as you can. Progress is always the beauty of America. Isn't it? It's true. You can't stay stuck. You gotta adapt, you gotta change. There's no more town criers, there's no more blockbuster video. <laughs> the Verizon guy went to Sprint, there's no loyalty! No loyalty! Laws get passed, everyone gets 
pissed, that's what's going to happen. Every law has pissed somebody off, but almost every law was necessary. They had to pass a law to stop drinking and driving, right? They did. You know somebody was really pissed when that happened. Yeah, somebody came home like, Sharon, I can't believe it. We can't drink and drive anymore. How else am I going to enjoy traffic without a cold brewski right between my lap? I took the test drunk. I already proved that I could do it. That pissed somebody off. They had to outlaw bestiality, okay? They had to outlaw that. Yeah, and you know somebody was pissed, man. Somebody came home, some sheep farmer, looking at all his sheep, just like, damn it, Sharon, there they are, all of them out there. Man, what am I supposed to do? How else am I going to sleep? Count them? That's not going to work. We're in our wild days right now, man. We're in that moment where Britney Spears shaved off her head. That's what's happening in America. That was the election. That was us saying, you don't know us! Because <laughs> we used to be rocking, man. The country, all the other countries loved us. We were like, baby, hit me one more time. You know what I'm saying? They're like, I like this America with its pigtails looking all cute. With their semi-Christian values, but you know they're whores. <laughs> shaved our head. Don't tell us what we are. <laughs> you know, the one pro about having Trump as president is I think every other country is finally like, you know what? Let's leave America alone for a little bit. You know, uh, don't worry. We're sorry. We asked way too much out of you guys. Just handle your shit. A little bipolar. We're going through our Britney shaving her head phase. That's what we're going through. She's doing great again. That's what happened with us as soon as he left. Ah! <laughs> we're going through Axel Rose and Chinese democracy. That's what we're going through. We're going through the GNR album that nobody gave a shit about. Back when he's hanging out with Buckethead. Yeah, that's a good guitarist. Right, because that's what America kind of is. We're kind of like Axl Rose, you know? We came out with fucking, you know, welcome to the jungle. People loved us, right? Like, yeah, doing snake dances, whatever. <laughs> you know, people like, those are cool people, yeah. And we want to party with them and do coke with them, man, you know? And then we, we, we got too much in our heads. America was like, I'll fight everybody. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, that, that's what, you know, the same thing like Axl going on TV. I'm going to fight everybody. Come on, bring it. I'll fight all the major companies, let's do it, right? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, and then, then he got a little bloated, he got a little crazy, he went off into his own little cave, I'm gonna make music by myself, you know? <laughs> and now he's back on his little reunion tour, that's what we need to get to, we need to get back to that point. We're gonna not look good afterwards. <laughs> We're gonna be overly sweaty. We might not, you know, snake it up as much as we used to. We might just do a little head nod, you know what I'm saying? But people love us again. We'll be like, remember these hits? Yeah. Oh man, I, I mean, I'm really happy that you guys, you guys are a great audience. You guys are awesome, to be honest. Lovely. Thank you for coming out. So for whatever reason, whether you're a fan of mine, whether you're not a fan of mine, you're gonna be one, or whether you hated everything I said. <laughs> If you hated everything I said, just know this. I wrote it to, to piss you off. <laughs> and I sat down, and I was like, I'm gonna really piss off so-and-so. I can't write to want write these words. We can make each other love each other again. If you want to feel better about your life, if you have anybody in your life feeling bad and grumpy, like, oh, the world sucks, first kick him in the chin. <laughs> And you tell them this, get off of Facebook, get off of Instagram, get off of Twitter, get off of social media, stop reading into things, right? Get away from this clutter, get away from it all, stop comparing your life to other people's lives, okay? That girl did not go to Cancun every day of the year, she went there once, alright? Once, took 200 pictures and is slowly releasing them like Tupac with albums, okay? Those two 24 year old girls do not own that boat. <laughs> <laughs> this guy does. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a great country. Right? We all woke up alive today. We all have food in our belly. We all have phones. We all have shoes. Right? We're able to tweet about shit. F FML. <laughs> 
It's harder to do that joke every week. It's harder to do that. <laughs> every week it's getting nuttier. <laughs> we stopped talking to each other face to face, right? And then this election happened. Everybody poked out of their heads. They're like, what the fuck just happened? You know? Right? But that's it. That's what we need to do. We need to all talk to each other again. People get so upset nowadays. It's like, stop being upset. You know, like, you know, do it. Okay, so we got Trump. Fine. Let's say, let's say he goes for all the four years. We're going to be fine. We're going to survive. We always done it. Yeah, it's not going to go too crazy. He's kind of shaking shit up. He's, he's starting it up, man. He's slowly making America great again in the weirdest way possible. <laughs> right? It's like that shitty boyfriend that's like, get yourself together, get shit. Ugh, right? You're like, I will. Fuck you. <laughs> That's what happened, man. So, I'm not gonna do those jokes anymore uh, after tonight. I, I, it's too much, man. I don't. I, I never really talked about politics before, and it's just getting crazier and crazier. And uh, people are really divided. And I, I think in the division, though, we're finding out who we really love. You know, we're finding out that we have a voice, and that's the best thing about it. We forgot, yeah. right? We forgot we had a voice. We thought we only had emojis for the past 10 years. <laughs> emojis and memes. <laughs> but you're enjoying, here's the thing. I thank you so much for coming out to stand up. There's a reason that people like stand up. You wanna know why we love stand up? Because it's an American tradition. Yeah, it was created in America. Stand up along with jazz, blues, things like that. You're watching an American tradition right now, right? Because only Americans are cocky enough to be like, I got some shit to say, give me a microphone. <laughs> Give them some beers. They're gonna listen. <laughs> We're gonna fix this up. Oh, you're gonna be good. Thank you guys for going through all that, all that with me. Yeah, I got to do almost every bit of that joke. I fucking love it. Thank you guys for going with me on that journey. I thought it was a lot of politics and everyone's tired of it, you know? But I had to say my point. I, I, I'm filming it because I'm like, I want to put it out there. I want people to know, like, hey, you know, like, have some humor about it, yeah? Let's all let's all fall in love with each other again, right? Yeah. yeah. Let's all make friends with our neighbors. I'm hopeful. So if you want to feel better about life, get off of Instagram, get off of Facebook, get off of Twitter, get off of Snapchat, get off all of that. Experience life. Put away the phone. Live in the moment. Enjoy each other. You know. Then we won't have something. Then you'll actually start hearing the message behind the words instead of getting affected by buzzwords. Because it's all buzzwords. Thug doesn't mean black. Illegal doesn't mean Mexican. Terrorist doesn't mean Muslim. And racist doesn't mean white. We need to stop labeling each other that. Right? You know what happened is this. Everybody got online and everybody started judging other people's lives and comparing their lives to other people's. Don't do that. Don't do that, right? You can't. If you want to feel better about your life, get off Instagram, get off Snapchat, get off Facebook, get off Twitter, get off of everything. Stop looking at other people's supposed likes and shares and comments, right? Get off of it. Enjoy the people you're around. You're with a group right now that loves you. These people love you right now. Enjoy them. Have those moments, right? Get off all of that. So, well, hold on. Before you do, add me. Add me first. Because I need the numbers. Add me comment. And then get off of all that stuff. <laughs> you guys have been great. I'm Nick Garrett. Thank you so much. <laughs> and that's my stance, man. I don't take too many stances, right?